the Arab Bain Drill for the Danny Nong Stingrays and the 18s Girls Coast Josh Moore. Josh, thanks for coming on. Ah, uh, thanks for having me, Coops. Good to be on. No, I appreciate it. Um, so tell us a bit about yourself. What got you into the coaching landscape and uh, get your time currently? Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's as as like most coaches, I guess we um we finish our footy career and still want to be involved in footy in some way. And for me, it was just a natural progression, just to step into coaching. Um, I was lucky enough to coach my own, my own senior footy team when I was twenty eight. Um, and ten years later, here I am coaching the Stingrays, Stingrays girls um, at a pretty high level, which is awesome. Now, obviously, in that time, I mean, we won't go through all of them, but as you said. All the coaches and all the assistant coaching roles and stuff like that you've had from the time you said at Rye and then you're continuing all the way up until now, the Dan Nong Sing race. Um, obviously, you got the opportunity through your hard work and all these other coaching levels that you've been at. But um, let's go with the State Academy, the AFRW National Academy. How did that opportunity in particular come about and how, how good has that been for you? Because obviously, they had a camp recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, lucky enough, um, I started at the Stingrays, uh, mentored by Nick Cox, who was the, the head coach there, and he was always pushing for me to um, to go for higher opportunities. Um, so I was l lucky enough to be involved with Vic Country for the last few years. It's been awesome for my development. Um, and then just recently um, got invited by Taka Bokia to help out with the AFLW National Academy. Um, yeah, which has just been awesome um, to be involved in. I've learned so much from from all those guys, and um, yeah, continue to um, continue to develop in those areas. That's good. So, um, so how was that camp in particular last two weeks ago now at Icon Park at GMH? Where how how was that? Was weeks for the girls, and how good was it to see really the best of the best of this year's draft crop already early? Yeah, I sort of knew going in that it was going to be a pretty strong crop of girls. Um, but literally, literally blown away how 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 talented they are. Um, from a coaching point of view, we sort of went in with with a few themes, and the girls it up straight away. And yeah, pretty excited to continue on the work with those girls throughout the year. I think um, there was twenty three girls in there, um, and each and every one of them showed how good they were in the three day camp. Um, so it's going to be exciting to be a minor part of their their journey, and um, yes, yeah, can't wait to um, watch them play a few games throughout the year. That's good. So, who were some standouts that you fill in those twenty three that um, sort of out to you? and maybe impress you more than what you probably know the would, but like you're like, gee, they're really good. <laughs> yeah, mate. It's I could literally name all twenty three. Um, they are there's no um, there's no weak links in there, but. Um, to name a couple, I mean, Ash Centra certainly stands out for me. I've done a bit of work with her at Vic Country. She's from Gippsland Power. Yeah. She's just a natural, natural um, athlete. She's um, – and her footy footy stuff is through the roof. There's a couple of Oakley Charger girls, Emma McDonald and Sienna Talleridi. They stood out at the camp. Um, mm. So Fight from Sandy was also quite, quite good. And then um, – from the interstate, as I thought, Zippy, Zippy Fish is a really well balanced player, um, really exciting player to watch. So there are there are a couple of names for you. And so you obviously been in the big country side of things as well. Who is the players in the last few years or got picked up recently? Do you to see how they go in their AFL double journeys and some people that are in that category for this year's draft? Yeah, so I did the forwards at Vic Country last year. We were lucky enough to get a few forwards drafted. So Lila Keck and Chantal Mason are two that spring to mind straight away. Um, they just love love their footy, live and breathe it. Um, so I'm really excited to watch those two develop at the, at the next level. Um, and then coming through this year, um, obviously Ash Centra. Um, there's a couple of Stingray girls and Ali Simons and Zoe Bazanko that I think are going to have good years. Um, and Sarah Howley from Geelong is another one to keep an eye on. Sure. Now, obviously, the Danny Nong has been the coach the last few years at least. Uh, how's that opportunity or how's that role been for you? Obviously, you mentioned all these roles that you've been assisted in. And then to be the big dog, if you will, um, at the Danny Nong race. And have some success stories this year, those three girls in the this year. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, um, that's sort of um, what makes me tick, I guess, getting the girls to the next level, whether, whether that's AFLW or VFLW. Um, yeah. That's sort of that's what sort of drives me to to keep going back to coaching to see the girls get to the next level. But um, in term from from a personal um, coaching point of view, yeah, it was my first year last year and my second this year. But I think one 
for all the coaches out there is just to stay patient. I was I was an assistant coach with Coxie at the Stingrays for for a good five years. Um, so I think just to stay patient with your coaching, um, you never know where it can lead you. Um, yeah, and it's it served me really well to be patient. That's for sure, exactly. Patience is a virtue, they say. Now, obviously, there's some. Now, obviously, you mentioned you've been the full-time coach of the Danny Long Singers, but obviously, there's a time you to mention you've been an assistant there as well. Who would you say some of the, the draft success stories at the Danny Long Singers, whether it's someone from this year or in the previous years? Um, yeah, we're pretty lucky at the Stingrays that we've got a pretty good breeding ground. We get um, we sort of, yeah, Coxie's had some good success getting players drafted. But yeah. um, I started off in the boys' program, and in my first year, Hayden Young was one player that got got picked mm-hmm. up pretty high. And the standards that he set for the rest of the group sort of blew me away. So Youngie was um, an absolute professional. And then um, Judson Clark and Connor McDonald sort of followed him in his footsteps as well. There, there are a couple of names that spring to mind. And in the girls' space, I think um, – yeah, there's probably two, Charlie Ryan and Amber Clark. They came through and just absolutely dominated under 18 level. Um, and I think they're going to have big careers in the AFLW. Sure. Now, you, you mentioned there Hayden Young and the men's side of thing. And what a great story he's been. Obviously, a top 10 pick, I think he was, or around that mark. And obviously, yeah. been a gun half back for Frio. Now, obviously, he's transitioning into the midfield role. Did he have that role of the Stingrays? And uh, how do you think Hayden would go in that type of role? Yeah, um, so he was. Um, I was the midfield coach at the time, and he was. He started off the season as a half back, um, yeah. but he ended up the season as a midfielder. Um, he's a player that can literally play anywhere, and because he's got such a damaging kick, we loved him off half back. But he uses leadership and professionalism. So his his work through the middle of the ground for us um, took us to the next level and took us into finals. So I've got yeah. no doubt um, with Frio this year transitioning into the midfield. He's He's well and truly ready to go, and I think he's going to have a huge year. But like, I think he's um, if he hasn't had a breakout year already, um, I think it'll be this year. You know, he could potentially be an All Australian as a midfielder. Absolutely, that wouldn't shock me the way he's started his career, pretty smooth and cruising, doing very well. And if he can keep going that level and more, you know, I agree. He'd be an All Australian conversation for sure. Um, who are some girls that have been that eight innings this year for Danny Nong Stingray. So there's someone that keep an eye out on um, and someone that you may, may be getting drafted when they come at the end of the year. Yeah, well, we've got the two girls in the National Academy, obviously Ali Simons and Zoe Bazanko. So um, they had great years as bottom majors last year and, and have earned the right to be National Academy members. But a couple of players to look at for in addition to that would be Gemma Reynolds and Kayla Dalgleish. There are a couple of small zippy forwards that um that have been dominating on the track um so i'm looking forward to seeing how they perform this year and a couple of bottom ages in uh, matilda argus and charlotte gilmore um yeah as i said they're bottom ages but i think um they've set themselves up to have a good year this year um and hopefully at their top age year next year they can go to the next level again Sure. And you mentioned Gemma Ramsdale, obviously, there before. And obviously, she was someone that was eligible this year. So what do you say to players like Gemma or anyone in that position, you know, where they're in their draft year, they unfortunately don't get picked up? How do you try and help motivate them, you know, to keep pushing, say it's not over, especially if all these new avenues are getting picked up mid-season, injury replacements, et cetera? Yeah, Gemma Ramsdale was um, was an absolute beauty for me. She was our captain at the Stingrays and uh, very unlucky not to find herself on an AFLW list. But she's been training with um, Collingwood in the VFLW. Okay. Um, so she's, um, yeah, she's not one that's going to give up. She'll continue to chase her dream. And I've got no doubt with her determination um, that one day she'll she'll make it. Sure. Now, obviously, her good friend, Michaela Williamson, obviously got drafted to Hawthorne, Meg Robinson, obviously to Carlton and Sophie Butterworth to Hawthorne. Uh, yeah. What's some, what's some words you got on that, those three girls in particular and what type of players they'll bring to those clubs they're at? Yeah, I was... I was a little bit staggered to see Mickey Williamson drop um, drop so low in the draft of 17. I was sort of yeah. um, hoping, expecting her to go in the top 10. So I think Hawthorne got an absolute steal with her at pick 17. I think she's um, she's ready to go this year. I think she'll play on the outside, um, on the wing or half back um, for Hawthorne AFLW this year. But um, as her body matures, I think she's going to be – a top liner at the AFLW level just with her running capacity and just her, um, yeah, just the way that she does things. Um, I think she's going to be a star. Um, Meg Robertson, yeah, she's she's obviously got the basketball background, so she moves through traffic really well. Once again, I think, I think Carlton got a steal with her so, so late in the draft. Um, she'll yeah. probably take a little bit more time to 
to mature just the position that she plays as an inside mid half forward. It's probably a bit tougher for those players to step in straight yeah. away. Um, and then Sophie Butterworth at Hawthorne as well. She's um, she's a tall forward that um, yeah, she was she was outstanding for us at Stingrays level. Um, but like Meg being a t- like being a tall forward, the position that she plays mm-hmm. might take a little bit more time to develop than Mickey. Um, but once she's up and running and she understands um, what it takes, I think um, yeah, there's there's no ceiling for her. Sure. Now, obviously. Some current AFRW plays, Geordie Allen, Mackenzie Early came back to the club in some capacity. Uh, what's how how good is it to have those type of girls, even if it's permanently or you know on and off, to have them back at the club and be amongst the current crop? Oh, it's like for the playing group to have to have ex players come back and and um, input their their knowledge onto the group is just amazing. I mean, I, I'm learning from those girls as well as a coach. So they come in and, yeah, they really lead the way with, with the way that they go about things with their leadership and their coaching. Um, so, yeah, Mac and, Mac and Charlie um, are two that, that are sort of in a fair bit. And then Geordie Allen um, from Collingwood AFL, she's been outstanding with her leadership well so we're so lucky at the stingrays that we get these players to come back and want to give their time they do it they do it voluntarily like not getting paid yeah um, so, yeah it just shows the character of the girls for sure now this year obviously with the drop on it was still a fair way away and obviously there's all these academies so positions could change but if you were to so who are some top contenders overall from any state any of the teams um they feel be up there in the draft and we talk about it in nine months time what you mean like Who's going to be at the top end of the AFLW draft? This draft of this crop that's going through now down the under 18s levels. Yeah, um, I think I don't think it's out of school to say that it's probably one of the best drafts um, that we've seen in the intake of AFLW. So I think clubs will be scrambling to try and trade up and get get some top end picks because I think um, yeah the top ten are going to be outstanding. But um, obviously Ash Centra for me is probably a bit of a standout. Um, I know Indy Rashid from SA's um, rated really highly. So is Havana Harris from Queensland. So those three girls could easily go really high. Um, but in saying that, like, I think development certainly is not linear. So there's going to be players that will pop up and, and yeah, stand yeah. out from nowhere. So at the moment, like Ash, Havana, Indy, Zippy are sort of at the top of the tree. And Emma, Emma McDonald's another one in that conversation. But um, – I think there's going to be girls that, um, yeah, that develop throughout the year and that will put their hand up as well. So it's going to be a pretty exciting year in the in the women's space um, in terms of drafting and recruiting. And I know speaking to the recruiters in the AFLW, they're um, pretty excited about the crop as well. Sure. And, I mean, even this year's was pretty good. If you just look at Port Adelaide alone, they've got, you know, Lauren Young, Sinead Goody, Piper Window, Molly Brooks, Alyssa Brook, to name a few. Um, yeah. All those girls, you know, probably in an open pool, if, you know, there was all normal, you would have probably all those girls, if not all, if not most of them, in the top five, really. They just dominated yeah. Piper, Loz and Goody in particular. Yeah, yeah. they um, South Australia was really, really strong last year. I think they're going to be strong again. Um, in terms of in terms of states, I think Queensland is one, te- is one state that are doing things really, really well and producing lots of top-end talent. So, um I guess um, it's always been sort of a Victoria um, centric sort of sort of draft, but um, yeah, the national game is live and well, and um, Queensland are giving us something at Vic, Vic Country to chase this year. Sure. Who would you say is some players that are kind of flying under the radar at any of the uh, under eighteen levels teams that you've seen or heard of? Um, they're kind of flying under the radar a little bit. They're not getting talked about as much as those top echelon names that we've mentioned already, and that there is as well. Yeah. Um, oh, it's a good question. I probably it's probably a hard one for me to answer, to be honest, mate. Um, like it's we haven't played in the games, and and the girls that I've been working with at national level um, have probably already made a bit of a mark for, for themselves, so they're probably not flying under the radar so much. So um, pro- we'll probably have another chat mid season, mate, and I'll probably have some more answers for you. No, it sounds good. But, um... Do you do any particular type of drills at training at Sting Racing particular that you like to implement? Like, there's a kind of there's a drill that you like doing every single session. Yeah, um, we're sort of just um, the way that I've the, the way that I've set up training um, for the girls this season is 
we train in blocks. Um, so to give you a little bit of insight, this this week was our first week back. So this week our block was team attack. So everything that we did in training was based around how we want to attack the game and, and around our offense. Yep. Um, and then when the girls come in next week, it'll be team defense. So all the drills that we do next week will be based around pressure and, um, yeah, just, just the way that we defend the field. Um, and then the third week in, we'll come in and we'll train contest methods. So we sort of break it down in in, in, um, in the phases of the game and focus on that for the whole week. Um, it's a little bit easier for the coaches to, to coach. It's certainly easier for the players just to focus on one area rather than lots of different areas. But, um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. And in, in, in addition to that, being in the Coach Talent League, we've got a real strong, heavy, fundamental focus. Um, so we do a lot of craft stuff, a lot of a lot of basic stuff that um, just hones in on getting the basics right. Mm, sure. How, how do you find the time to balance the fun and seriousness in training sessions? Obviously, you've got to be serious. And some people say you you got to have a little bit of fun. How do you balance the two? Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a good question because we obviously we only get the girls for two hours on a Tuesday night, two hours on a Thursday, so we haven't got them for a long. A long time and, and within that time strength and conditioning coaches want to want a piece of them and well-being coordinators want a piece of them and um, they get pulled left right and center and then obviously I, i'm trying to teach them the fundamentals of the game um but yeah you're right it we really do try and, and put some fun into it as well because it can be pretty pretty full on for the girls so um, that was one thing I think at the National Academy that Tar Tarkin Lockyer did really well was um, allow the girls time to have lots of fun to make it enjoyable. Um, and I think that's the best way to get the best out of the girls. For sure. Um, is who's is there anyone in particular that comes to mind that loves the limelight, the attention of the camera at the Stingrays and they or the Vic Country sides that you've been a part of or the A4W Academy? They can't get enough of the camera and they know exactly where it is to over celebrate something or just do something out of, well, not out of the ordinary, but they know where it is and they play it up a bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm laughing because it's um, everyone that's worked with her will know that it's a Stingrays girl. So she's in the National Academy and the Vic Country Academy and, and it's Stingrays and she's, um, she's a very outgoing sort of character and she does certainly bring the fun. Um, to all those programs. Her name's Ali Simons. Um, really enjoy working with her. Um, she's, yeah, she loves the camera. She loves the celebration. And, um, yeah, she's she's fun to be around. She's probably one that we have to um, pick and choose the time when to be serious and when to have fun. And she's still, still yeah. learning still learning when to bring that. But, um, yeah, she's a great character and um, really, really loved by all the the people within the programs um and last year that was probably lila keck she was a great character yes. and very outgoing loved loved a goal celebration so i think um i think ali simons is going to follow in lila's footsteps yeah, you still love, you know, talking about someone that loves a goal celebration that'd probably be the perfect example for someone loves to go and loves the attention and loves you know the excitement as well yeah, absolutely, um, and we want we want all the players to to be themselves. So if that means celebrating a goal within the right time and the right place, um, yeah, for the girls and the boys within programs to express themselves and be themselves, we're all for that. Sure. What would be some advice you would give some up and coming draftees for some of the girls or guys just in general in the under eighteen programs this year, or someone even a couple of years in advance? What advice would you give them to keep pushing through? And for some of the girls, like you said with Gemma as well, they didn't get unfortunately get picked up to keep going. What advice would you give them all in this time? Um, there's there's a there's a little bit of advice, but probably the main one would just to be ha just to have a little bit of balance in in their life because mm -hmm. a lot of the a lot of the players come through are doing year twelve. Um, yeah. And they've got lots of thing, things happening outside of footy. So I think it's important to have the balance between school, football, and then family life, friends life. Um, so don't put all your eggs into one basket, whether that's footy or school. Sort of make sure you've got a balance of everything so you're not, um, you're not burning out. Um, and I think that's one message that we preach at the Stingrays really well is for, you know, if, if a player needs to have a night off because they've got some schoolwork, that's totally fine. Or if they've got a, if they've got a family dinner that they need to go to, have the night off Stingrays and, and go and go and do that. So to have that balance, I think is super important. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. I mean, you need that balance. So, you know, you don't get burnt out as you would, as some people would say. So that's a good way to go about it. Who would you say has got the best kick at the club? 
at the stingrays yep um oh there's there's a bottom age girl i hate singling out one because we've got quite a few but there's a bottom age girl her name's evelyn Connolly. she's um she's an elite kick um on her right foot she's working on her left as well but um yeah i think um every time the ball is in her hands um as coaches we're pretty happy it's good uh this is a couple of questions for you josh i appreciate appreciate coming on um now from in terms of the afl side of things about players that are currently in the competition it's these two questions so who is a player that you think is kind of flying under the radar in the AFW competition. Is someone, like I said before, that's not really getting talked about as much. It really should, because there's some players you can put in this spot. Yeah, it'd be hard for me not to go past the Stingrays girl that I've coached. So the first one that comes to mind is Mac Erdley, and she's she is one of our coaches at the Stingrays as well at the moment. But I've sort of watched her play over the last couple of seasons. She's been playing as a key back um, at the yeah. Hawks, and she's been – playing on some of the best players and, and doing her job really well. So I think for a 19, 20-year-old girl to be doing that um, is pretty huge and it probably doesn't get spoken about a lot. Um, and I've got no doubt in the next couple of years she'll continue to beat her player but also show a bit of offensive flair. So I think I think Mac Early is going to turn into um, yeah, su- if, a superstar of the AFL. I agree. I mean, you know, key defenders. Um, it's actually, this is another question I was going to actually add. Do you feel like just in general, in the AFL and AFL, where do the defenders deserve their own official title of an award? Like, you know, obviously the Coleman is obviously directed towards forwards and the Brownlow. People just say, all keep saying it's not a midfielder's award, but it basically is, you know, and Ruckman is starting to get recognised in that category. Do, do the defenders need their own official title as well? Um, yeah, it's a good question. Like, maybe, but I think internally within clubs, within the four world walls, um, they certainly do get recognised. Like in in our reviews, we do, it's not just a midfield review. We certainly we praise and and identify um, all areas of the ground. And um, it's a tough position to play in the back line to shut down. Number one, you've got to be able to shut down your player, and then number two, you've got to be able to give a bit of offence as well. So I think internally, um, Mac and other defenders like Gemma Ramsdale for us, for example, at the Stingrays last year, they're certainly recognised and. Um, we celebrate that internal. Uh, that's good, and that's a good way to go about it for sure. I mean, in the public eye, yeah, definitely hardly here, but it's good to hear it behind the scenes that that's being recognised as it is definitely deserved. And they stop, obviously, stop the key fours from dominating. Um, one final one, pressure coming on. Who's someone in the AFLW competition that you think will be a starter in the future to come? Um, I'll try and give you one that. Um, that I guess isn't a stingray. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, Could be someone from just got drafted or just someone that's been in for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, I reckon Bridie O'Rock is probably one that I rate really highly. She played at the Bendigo Pioneers last year um, and she was drafted to Geelong um, just yep. in the last draft so she's um she's a top end she's got some really good athletic traits um and i think she's yeah not too far not too dissimilar to um michaela williamson i think she's going to be a bit of a star whether that happens straight away or it takes her a little bit of time i think um we'll be talking about bridie o'rourke um yeah for many years to come nice thanks josh at real project coming on all the best for the rest of the end as you said we'll chat again at some point throughout the year as well so appreciate coming on no worries thanks so much for having me thanks josh